Hello, everyone. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, let's start. Uh, it's, very, it's great to be here. Uh, this is San Hong uh, from Alibaba uh, GVM team. I shall speak today about uh, the optimization work we did at Alibaba. OK, let's take a brief look at the agenda. The first part, I think I will talk about the workloads uh, work, work, work we already used uh, in, in Alibaba. The second part is uh, we just talk about the major optimizing work we, at, we did at Alibaba. I think this is the major work. And the, the, the third part, we just talk about how we provide the technical support for our Java developers. Uh, the last part is uh, related to summary and the QA. Okay, let's go. Uh, here is uh, our uh, overall uh, introduction. Actually, all the Java application developed in Alibaba, as well as our affiliated companies, uh, including Alipay, Aliyun, and Chainio, all of them are running on our customized GDK. Uh, it's based on OpenGDK we call it as AGDK. And uh, our architecture is service-oriented. It means uh, uh, the request will be processed between different services. So it will involve multiple RPC calls. Uh, the second characteristic is our architecture is heterogeneous. It means it involves the interoperability between native Java language and Java. And uh, actually, we use Java very, very massive scale. I just show you the data. Here's the data I get from uh, China single day uh, in last year. You can look, look at this picture. Our peak transaction per second uh, reached to 175,000. And the payment reached to uh, up 120,000. So, Actually, internally, Alibaba has uh, several mechanisms to handle these challenges made by such huge transaction volume. We spend a lot of uh, uh, efforts on software optimization. Uh, in this talk, I just share some experience from GVM perspective. Um, the first thing I try to talk about, we just build some container resource management technology for GVM. Here is a comparison uh, between multiple instance de deployment and single instance deployment. As you have known, the traditional G G2E container, such as Ap Apache Tomcat, it just supports multiple web applications can deploy into the same GVM instance. However, in reality, we just deployed only single instance, single web application into our container. I think the one of the major reasons here is Java platform does not provide the solid resource consumption for web application. That's, that's the reason why we come out of this technology. You can pack up multiple application units into the GM, GVM instance, and then we create a tenant resource container for each of them. Actually, tenant is a very, very virtual concept. And you can map a tenant as, a, for example, a single thread or a single thread group, even an OSI bundle. And then all the cons resource consumption we made at a tenant unit, at the tenant level. So here's the Simple application, a uh, simple API, just a demonstrated for you. Uh, the first uh, class is a tenant configuration. We just use it to maintain resource consumption information for tenant, uh, resource con configuration uh, information for tenant. A uh, tenant container is used to represent a specific tenant. Here is a code snippet. You can see. You just uh, create a one, one tenant, and then you put uh, both CPU usage and the heap usage on this tenant. And uh, just to take a close look at the CPU limit, we just use the integer value. 
512. Actually, this integer value is a relative CPU shares, which is used to identify available time to the tenant. Just to give an example. If given we have two tenants, tenant A and tenant B. If tenant A have a CPU shares set, for example, 100, then tenant B, uh, 200. As a result, the tenant B will receive twice CPU time of tenant A. Okay, let's talk about the relationship between thread and the tenant. The thread will be attached to the tenant automatically when the thread enters into the this run method, shown in this code example. And then we will detach from this tenant while leaving this block. And any thread, if you fork thread in this run method, and this thread will be attached to this tenant automatically. And also, last, we just provide some option to our Java developers. They can li limit the maximum threads the tenant can is allowed to use. Okay, let's look at how we do CPU management for, CPU, uh, for tenant. We just talk about the implementation on Linux platform. On Linux, Linux just provides C group for CPU management. By using C group, we can partition all the, process, pro, all the processes into a different group. And then you can assign different uh, consumption policy for each of our group. Actually, process, processes and threads are treated in the same way from C group perspective. It only sees both of them as uh, tasks. So back to our GM index. Hotspot implementation exactly implements one-to-one -one mapping between Java thread object and the native thread object. So far, hey, just look at this example. We have a 10A. 10A has a two native threads. For CPU sorting, we just put this native threads, this, this underlying two native threads into the same C group. So that the CPU consumption made by 10A will subject to the policy made by C group. Okay, let's look at the detail of the directory. You know, each of C group is represented, represented by directory. Here's an example. Just look at this past name. We have a ten, T0. T0 is a tenant ID we created for tenant zero. And in T0 directory, we have a task subdirectory. In this structure, all the threads owned by tenant zero will put into this task sub subdirectory. And the, the file cpu.shares is used to maintain the CPU quota information from, for tenant zero. If, if a thread sw switch between tenants, and the thread must be, must be put into the different C group directory. Okay, this is talk about how we do HIP for HIP management for tenant. Actually, we did a modification based on G1GC. G1GC, as you have known, divides the entire HIP into the equally sized HIP region. We just create a tenant allocation context for each tenant. And uh, we just use tech, we call tech, to manage all the HIP region used by tenant. More specifically, you can look at this picture, and uh, each of HIP region will maintain a uh, one pointer, which, point, which points into the tag, so that we can easily identify the ownership of uh, uh, HIP region for tenant. And uh, one HIP region only contains the objects from single tenant. We also uh, limit the HIP, tenant HIP consumption by the max number of the HIP region, the tenant is allowed to use. We also need to consider some other things. Essentially, G1GC is a copying uh, collector. It just copies object from, from space to space. So in our tenant isolation context, we, did, we need to make sure we copy object to the correct region. 
Here's an example. We just take a tender one as, a, as an example. All the live objects from tender zero must be copied into the survival region owned by tender one after GC. This is survival region. And uh, we also need to consider some other changes for tend isolation. The one case is TLab. TLab is used for faster object allocation. Actually, the TLab is totally relying on the spaces, the spaces provided by hyper region. So when thread switching between tenants, for example, if thread A, thread one, Switch, switch from tenant A to tenant B, then we need to refresh the TLab information for this thread one. So that we need to make sure the TL, TLab use the hyper region owned by tenant B, if, if, if switch to tenant B. Uh, another option is maybe we can use a relative uh, easy way to implement this. For example, when thread switch between tenants, and you can uh, just uh, retire the entire TLB buffers after switching. Uh, the second change is uh, we just need to calculate I hope. You know, I hope is a threshold that is used to trigger mixed GC. We need to calculate I hope for tenant. So the mixed GC might, will be triggered per tenant. Mm. This actually leads to the last question. Actually, do we need uh, the GC per tenant? It means uh, we just uh, do GC for tenant one, but uh, without uh, any impacts on others. Actually, this is a uh, very interesting uh, question, but it's very hard. We, are, we need a fuller exploration for this because of extremely complexity of our implementation. As you, uh, we have known, all the applications are packed into the same GVM instance. So we need to provide some modeling stuff for our Java developers to monitor the status of each of our Java application, each of our Java application units. So we implement the standard GMX API for our Java developers. They can easily detect how much CPU has been used or how much heap has been used for tenant. For CPO, CGroup already has an accounting subsystem for CPU usage. So we just leverage that capacity and read that data and report it to, our, to the up-level application by GMX API. For heap, we just uh, use tech to maintain the uh, heap consumption information and then expose them to the Java developer by GMX API. Okay, the last page for container technology. Where we use it? In Alibaba, we already have Ali Tomcat. It's a, modifi it's a modified version by Alibaba based on Apache Tomcat. It allows multiple web applications deploying to the same G2E container. Let's just use this technology for resource sorting for each of our deployed web application. The second case is uh, we call the cloud engine, which is built on OSI technology. Uh, in this scenario, let's just map, map each of the OSI bundle as a tenant. Then they can use this for resource consumption management. We also some other cases. This is uh, some third part, uh, some information management platform. They just uh, you know. They load the GUI script dynamically, and then they want to, uh, because this GUI script are developed by some other city parties, they need to use this technology to control the resource consumption made by this GUI uh, script. They just map the GUI script to a specific tenant. So far, we, did not, we haven't implemented any IO sorting for tenant. Maybe we we'll consider in the next the plan. The second thing I just want to share is how we use coroutine in our situation for our e-commerce e application. 
Uh, just is a simple example demonstrate the impact caused by thread context. We develop a sample application. It has four IO threads and many other beans in logic. We just uh, profile it, and you can see the thread context is very high on four core machine. So it definitely has an impact on our throughput. We want to reduce it. Yes, uh, Aslinux API were introduced uh, in Java 7. By using them, actually you can easily write even driven application in proactor pattern. Here's an example. You just can process this request proactively with complete handler, which is designed for processing completion events. But, uh, however, we have seen some drawbacks caused by asynchronous API. Actually, it brings hard complexity to our Java developers. This is largely because the separation between the call, callers and the return, re return results. Also, it's very hard to debug. For example, you cannot simply use sing single, step AP, uh, single step functionality to debug your callback application in a straightforward way. So it's very hard. I think the last region is also is the important region. All the existing libraries, all the existing third-party libraries that are not working in this way. For example, you just call RPC in a synchronous way. You have to wait for results in synchronous. Actually, in this case, you lose the performance benefits made by asynchronous. Actually, it does not make sense for us to rework all the existing library to support asynchronous. This is a challenge. We cannot accept that. We cannot afford it. Here's a demo example to show how our approach does work. Excuse me. Here's a simple example to demonstrate our approach. Actually, only have three steps. In step one, we create a normal executor service. And in step two, we just create a reader object for waiting inputs. And in step three, we create a writer object. This will send a message to reader, reader socket. From this simple example, you can see we did not use any additional API for using coroutine. We, we just use coroutine like a thread. So in our context, coroutine has a thread-like semantics. Um, we, we, by using this way, we can achieve performance of asynchronous, but maintain simplicity of coding. Before diving, before diving into our detailed implementation, I just go through the two cornerstone technology we already used for our approach. The first thing is, as I think you all you know, GVM coroutine, which is implemented as part of multi-language project. In short, you can create multiple coroutines in the same thread by using this stuff. And you can use uh, Yield API. It helps to transfer uh, controls from coding A to code B. That's, that's the basic technology already implemented as a part of our MLVM project. OK. Uh, the second thing we use is uh, we, we are relying on selector. By using selector, actually, you can use only one single thread to manage multiple channels. For example, you can, you can register multiple I.O. events, including accept, connect, read or write, with, with interesting channel, and then you will get notified when, when some I.O. events is ready. The key idea here is uh, we just using selector mechanism for our coding scheduling in blocked network I.O. cases. 
I think it's a very detailed example to demonstrate how does it work. Just look at the code snippet in the top left. You have a blocked uh, synchronous read call on this channel. So what will happen in the underlying implementation? Just look at the code snippet in the bottom. The answer is there. This is our detailed implementation in the first step. We just check whether or not the channel is, read, is readable. If it is so, then we read the date and return results to our caller. Otherwise, two key things we are going to do. The first thing is we just reject the read event with the selector, actually uh, scheduler. And then we, the current coding will be blocked. And uh, then schedule to another available coding at this time. This is a detail. Let's look at the full picture. So we have a thread object. And then we have, a, we have created a scheduler instance for each of thread object. This scheduler is responsible for managing and scheduling all the coatings in this thread. As I have said, in underlying, the scheduler the scheduler is totally dependent on selector, which is used for managing all block IO, block IO cases for this thread. When some IO events happen, and when we get some notification, it's time for scheduler, scheduler to schedule next coroutine in runtime. This is a picture, let's look at the overall schedule process. We have created a terminology, VISP engine, to re represent our scheduler. And uh, you can register multiple interest events with this scheduler. For example, I will block I will events, as I have shown before. And also, you can register thread parking events, for example, thread sleep, cost by thread sleep. And then when the schedule, when the coding will be scheduled, Actually, we have three conditions. The first condition is when some events happened. When, when some uh, uh, interest events happened, for example, some I/O complete, right? Or some time after events happen, you cause thread sleep with 100 milliseconds, and then time expire. Then we have it is time it's time for scheduler to schedule next next coroutine. Or some thread unpunking events are generated by, for example, by object notify. We will talk about it in detail later. Or the second, the second condition is when new requests arrive. So the scheduler need to have the additional coding for this new task for its execution. The third condition is when thread or coding exits. For example, when the thread, main thread, is about to exit, we need, it need to schedule all the coatings for, for execution before it's exit. This is a simple API we provide for our Java developers with Visp Engine. Visp Engine provides two APIs, Dispatch. It allows you to you run task in a coroutine in the same thread. Execute, you can submit a task into the coroutine in a different thread. We also implement with thread execute. Actually, it's a normal thread executor. You just use it like a normal executor service. So that, for example, our, our Tomcat and, uh, or our middleware uh, software, they just use this API, change some, uh, just change a couple of lines and use with uh, thread executor so that all the submit tasks will be executed in the coroutine instead of, instead of threads. I think this is the last part I will talk in coroutine part. Um, how to handle synchronization for coroutine? This example. As I have mentioned, Visp Engine has a dispatch API which helps us to dispatch runnable task into coroutine. For example, you can say we just dispatch test full method in coroutine A, and then in coroutine A, in in the full test, and the 
we call the object of it so that the main thread will get blocked by the cause on object of it. That's the problem. Because we cannot continue and the, the main thread get blocked. We have the, the main thread has not any chance to run the next dispatching for colony B. Let's talk about our approach for synchronization. We modify synchronization in hotspot for support the coding scheduling. For fast lock, it's very simple. As you have known, the ownership of fast lock is determined by address on stack. Our coding has a separate stack, so it's natural support. We, we do nothing for this. For bias lock, so far, our current implementation does not support this. We just run our application without this op option. We did not see a noticeable performance drop. The last case is a very complex, complex case, inflated, inflated lock. Just look at the example I saw you uh, before. We want to dispatch two coroutines, coroutine A and coroutine B. When coroutine A gets executed, and then in step two, it just calls object weight. After that, the current coding A will be put into the wait list. And the, the only difference from normal GDK implementation is here we just want, we just call into the WISP engine, and the WISP engine will be help us to yield to, to the main thread. This is in step three, and so we have in step four, the main thread has a chance to schedule and dispatch next coroutine, coroutine B. In coroutine B, coroutine B does the cause object notify, and which generates which generate unpack events, which is used to notify or wake up coroutine A. At the end of coroutine B, in step, two, uh, in step six, and then it will yield control into the main thread. When, miss, when back to main thread in, set, in step seven, the main thread will yield uh, yields to the coding A. That's done. Uh, more specifically, uh, we just create a WISP thread in GVM runtime per coroutine. WISP thread just extends from Java thread. Java thread is a class implemented in hot, current hot, hotspot implementation for native part of uh, Java thread object. In addition to that, the WISP thread encapsulates coroutine spec information. For example, it just provides us a hook where we can use it to call into the WISP engine to schedule the next coroutine. OK, let's look at the performance results. Actually, we already used our uh, this technology for our online application. Is called CAS. CAS is for shopping cards in e-commerce context, and uh, with the same amount, with the same amount of requests, you can look at the traffic in and traffic out. We just did the comparison between normal GDK and uh, our AGDK by using coroutine. We just can get uh, almost 10% CPU usage saving. And actually, uh, in the Better case for IO intensive workloads, we already used for uh, by using a coroutine. We actually can uh, achieve up to around the 30 percentage CPU saving. Okay, let's review the revisit the WISP implementation. We just talk about the Java primitive lock stuff. We already talk about the network disk IO. Uh, case, actually we already modified GOC stuff. For example, if you call some, uh, you, if you use some GOC lock and got, get, gets blocked, actually, actually we already modified it and uh, it has a chance to schedule to another, a, a next available coroutine. Very similar to Java primitive lock. The only difference is we just, uh, it is just purely implemented in Java level instead of GVM level. So far, we did not support for disk IO for coding scheduling. Also, we not 
we do not support any code in native code. If if we call some block I/O in your GNI code, it does not support yet. Actually, all our e-commerce applications do not re rely on GNI implementation. The last part, I just uh, um, the, the the third thing I just uh, share with you is G warm up. We come out. Java warm up issue is a well known problem in Java world. Most of our high CPU consumption is made by lots of intensive math that get compiled by the underlying compiler. That's a problem. Actually, uh, our default GDK implementation come out of tier compilation. It can help on this, but it cannot totally resolve our uh, cannot totally resolve our problem. Actually, when these things happen, we saw much longer response time or some lots of time out of error. This is the reason why we come out of the warm up to resolve the warm up issues occurred in our e commerce application context. Actually, um, this is just look at the picture. This is the basic idea for the warm up. We have two environments beta environments and the product environments. Before going to product environments, we have we just run application in beta environments. The beta environments has the similar infrastructure with product environments, and then we just in this in this beta environments we just record all the profiling data for need, and in the product environment, and we just will compile GWAMA compile all messages based on previously recorded data. That's a detailed implementation in recording phase. We will record all the class initialized information, all the master compiler information, and then flush all of them into a disk as a log file. And in compiling case phase, we just want need to eagerly, eagerly load all the classes based on previous recorded data, and eagerly initialize them, and, and in last, we just submit all the messages into a into the C2 compiler for compilation. Uh, I think uh, the, only, the only tricky case we need to care about here is uh, we need to care about the initializing of class, for example. The initializing of, the initializing of class bar is totally dependent on the execution of full test. Otherwise, the count of bar will get the wrong value. So if we initialize but before execution of full test, we will get we will get wrong wrong result. How to do that? So our solution is we, we, we just initialize the class at the appropriate time. For example, after some determined business logic has been executed, then we can some, uh, then we just can uh, initially initialize this loaded class. This results. When we use uh, GWARMUP for our UMP application, which is implemented for discounting calculation, uh, X represents the time, Y represents the CPU. In step one, we just use GWARMUP to compile the hot methods in advance. So you can see some CPU time has been burned. And uh, after step two, actually all the real user requests come in so that you can see the difference. The blue line represents the tier compilation. The red line just uh, represents the GWAMP. You can see uh, tier compilation just uh, use CPU up to almost 100 percentage. But uh, for GWAMP, we just maintain CPU as a normal level. After step three, and uh, because most of our hot method has get, get compiled uh, by G tier, tier compilation, so it is reduced to as uh, uh, to normal level. So this result is uh, quite positive. We actually use G warm up, uh, we, uh, we actually use G warm up for a couple of our core e-commerce application for our online. Some, some other consideration for G warm up. Actually we don't, we don't record any dynamically generated classes. For example, classes generated by Groovy script. 
That's the problem because the class may change the between runs. We also not record any classes generated by, for example, Java reflection or proxy because the class name get changed in next run. We also compile the method without the mesh data information. We did this because we see some unexpected the optimization behavior when we apply mesh data profiling. Actually, this may be something we want to figure out further. We also, dis we also disable now check elimination for similar reason. So far, our cur current implementation does not is not compatible with tier compilation. We also consider it in the next plan. Okay, let's talk about the third part in this talk, how we provide engineering support for our Java developers. Actually, we modify hotspot for better profiling and debugging. For example, we implement mass tracing. Mass tracing is totally implemented in GVM. It's used to track the wall time for excusing our method. We also did a better heap profiling. We also did some uh, debugging improvements, debug on latex, I will discuss later. Uh, based on this, we also have our internal tools. We call it the profiler. The profiler is used by our Java developers to better monitoring, profiling, and troubleshooting the online Java applications, which, which is a web tool. Totally web. And the debugger is also a Brawler based debugging tool. You just can simply use Brawler to debug the application, which is totally, de which is totally deployed in the Ali Cloud. Okay, I think uh, the time is running out. Uh, maybe I, uh, I quickly go through the implementation for on debugger on demand uh, debugging. Actually, the current implementation of hotspot does not support this feature. This is a simple uh, example, demonstrate how to use it. When you start a Java application, you just uh, add a debug on edge option, and then after something wrong, you just can use the GCMD command to attach GDW agent into the target VM automatically. So far, our current implementation just support breakpoint set and uh, variable inspection. This uh, uh, detailed implementation, um, this feature is uh, uh, an experimental feature in our AGDK. This is uh, a uh, uh, detailed implementation for it. So we need to modify interpret hotspot to make sure the breakpoint post logic get generated when GVM start. We also need to modify GVM TN staff to add the two capacities. The first is accessing local variable. The second thing is the breakpoint set. We also need to add unattached functionality to GDWP agent, which is used to initialize GV, which is used to, used to initialize the GDWP agent, for example, create a socket or something like. We also extend the GCMD, as I have said before, for better usability. Last. So far, we, all, we are also working hard on the garbage collector optimization. The real-time processing in our big data scenarios, it requires a minimal stopword time. So we need to create something to, to minimize the stopword time, especially in young GC. We also found, uh, you know, we, the error cast, error catch is widely used in Alibaba. Actually, our modern garbage cloud generation pattern does not fit for this. We just want to think about this and how to improve it for our error catch. For the, the second part is we, we need for the performance optimization. As I have mentioned, we are service oriented. Our texture is a service oriented, and we, we also is a heterogeneous, so it, it will involve multiple, many, uh, it will involve many objects serialized and deserialized. So we, we just want to uh, think about all this and how to optimize object, object sy synchronized and desynchronized mechanisms for our purpose. Okay, this is a quick summary. 
uh, two, three casings implemented in AGDK. The first is a container. The second is a coroutine based on uh, MVM project. And the last thing is the warm up. Okay, I'm done. Thanks for your attention. Okay. Hello. Hello. Uh, thank you very much for this cool presentation. I have a couple of questions about the internal tools you know, you've mentioned. The, mm -hmm. pro the profiler, first of all. Uh, are there any plans to make them public? Uh, yeah. We have some internal plan. Uh, we've actually, we are very happy to, if we can contribute back to the OBGDK, something uh, internal di discussed. Yeah. Okay, thank you yeah. very much. Uh, some question about binding tenant to the uh, Java threads. Okay. Uh, you talk later that there is switching between tenant when yes. you uh, access into labs. Yeah. Why you have this problem is thread is already binded to one tenant. Yeah, you, you mean? Uh, so you start all threads working to work on particular tenant. Yes. So this thread works on TLAB and allocate only object related, I suppose, all, uh, related to, only to this tenant. Yes. Why you have problem on the slide you mentioned that you, it may be, TLAB usage may, may be shared between tenant. Okay, okay, got uh, In our context, we just uh, uh, make an uh, integration technology with Apache Tomcat. Actually, Apache Tomcat has a common thread pool. They use this common thread pool to serve the different web application, right? So when, for example, when we deploy two web applications into the same Tomcat container, and thread A, maybe at this time, they serve the web, web application A. And then the next time, maybe they need to serve to the next, uh, next web application, for example, next application B, right? So essentially, like, you're reusing threads. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, yeah. got it. Uh, second question, do you change, also change Linux code? Uh, no, we just use it, Li group, yeah, we just use it. Uh, oh. We just use the libc group API to map the uh, Java native thread with the group uh, stuff. Okay. Yeah. And last question about the warm up. Uh, you said you don't use method data, what do you mean? Um, Profiling data. We don't use any profiling data. Mass data is a concept that you implement in ho current hot. Then ho I didn't got what you mean. You drop. You said. Ah, oh, okay. Uh, you drop profiling for, for example, data. Yeah, and yeah, 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 yeah. Yes, yes. Right. We just, you know, we just record the uh, method on a, in a log file, and then we, for example, we just know method A is a very hot. Yes. In the in the in the in the run, in online online production environment, we just uh, submit the method A to the, uh, for, for C2 compiler, but without any profiling information. Oh, so you not reuse profiling information for yeah, this yeah. run, you only collect which method are hot and need to yeah, be yes. compiled. Yeah, yes. Yeah. Okay, yeah. okay, thank you. Thanks. Okay, I will stay here. If you have, current, have any question, maybe free to have a discuss with me. Thanks. <laughs>